the Chinese Communist Party is setting a trap for the United States. Will President Biden fall for it? Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Last week, U.S. climate envoy John Kerry traveled to China, where he said the world can't solve the climate crisis without China's engagement and commitment. Ah, oh, that's so nice. It's exactly what the Chinese Communist Party wanted to hear. Because you can totally get China's engagement and commitment for a price. You see, U.S. President Joe Biden has made tackling climate change one of the top priorities of his administration. That's why U.S. climate envoy Kerry traveled to Tianjin, China, last week to meet with their climate envoy, Xie Zhenghua. Kerry and Xie go way back. Here they are in 2015 at the signing of the Paris Climate Agreement, back when Kerry was President Obama's Secretary of State. And Mr. Kerry and Mr. Xie have held about 18 meetings since the start of the Biden administration. That's a lot, especially considering the fact that U.S.-China relations continue to deteriorate. And it's a sign that the Chinese Communist Party sees climate change as something they can use to their advantage. On one hand, it makes sense for the Biden administration to engage China on climate change because China is such a huge carbon dioxide emitter. China's annual carbon dioxide emissions are about the same as those of the next three biggest emitters combined, the United States, the European Union, and India. But that's also led to concerns that to get the Chinese regime to cooperate on climate change, the U.S. government could go easy on them when it comes to other important issues, like Chinese factories can have a little Uyghur slave labor as a treat, as long as those factories are solar powered. But the Biden administration swore up and down they wouldn't do this, that cooperation with Beijing on climate would not water down U.S. efforts to hold China accountable on other issues, including economic and human rights abuses. Which is not what the Chinese Communist Party wants to hear. And they made it very clear during Kerry's trip to Tianjin. In addition to in-person meetings with Xie, Kerry met with several other Chinese officials virtually, including Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Yang Jiechi, the Chinese Communist Party's top diplomat. You might remember Yang is the guy who berated Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Alaska. And it doesn't look like Kerry had a good time with Yang either. In fact, based on the photos released by Chinese state-run media, these looked like the worst Zoom meetings ever. I see John Kerry was using the Zoom zombie filter. Either that or he turned into a withered husk after being forced to listen to Wang Yi's tirade. Wang accused the U.S. of a major strategic miscalculation and urged the U.S. side to stop viewing China as a threat and rival cease containing and suppressing China all over the world, and take concrete steps to improve ties. Wang also objected to the U.S. calling climate change cooperation an oasis in the U.S.-China relationship. Because if the oasis is all surrounded by deserts, then sooner or later the oasis will be desertified. Ooh, I see what you did there. It's a climate change metaphor. How can the U.S. discuss climate change with China when it's responsible for changing the climate of U.S.-China relations? Here's Wang Yi's mic drop. And then, in case that wasn't enough pressure, party official Yang Jiechi told Kerry the U.S. had committed a series of erroneous acts to interfere in China's internal affairs and undermine China's interests. And the U.S. needed to take concrete steps to rectify wrongdoings. I'm surprised Yang didn't tell Kerry to go to his room and think about what he did. At this point, Kerry might as well have put on the Zoom cat filter. It couldn't have made things any worse. The Chinese Communist Party has one message for the U.S. They won't cooperate on climate issues unless the U.S. caves 
and does what the Communist Party wants on other issues, which is exactly what the Biden administration said it wouldn't do. But maybe Biden could cave just a little bit to China as a treat, as long as it's for solar power. More after the break. Welcome back. The Chinese regime hasn't always been so combative about climate cooperation. Earlier this year, my favorite state-run media, Global Times, suggested the climate issue could be the new ping-pong diplomacy, which didn't happen. Unless you count Wang Yi taking a ping-pong paddle to Kerry's face. You see, the Chinese Communist Party hoped that Biden would change Trump's China policies. But the Biden administration has continued to be tough on China. So the Communist Party is using Biden's climate change concerns as leverage. That's a nice climate you got there. It would be a real shame if it changed due to increasing carbon emissions from all our new coal-fired power plants. The Chinese regime thinks the Biden administration is weak, especially after America's chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. And it knows the U.S. needs a diplomatic win, especially ahead of COP26, the U.N. climate change conference next month. So the Chinese Communist Party is setting up a climate change trap for the Biden administration. The party would be happy to give President Biden a cooperation win, maybe by promising to stop financing coal-fired energy projects in other countries. As long as the U.S. shows more understanding toward China's interests, like stop sanctioning Chinese officials, or stop talking about Uyghur genocide, or stop selling weapons to Taiwan, or maybe lift a few of those Trump trade tariffs. It doesn't really matter what Biden caves on, as long as Chinese officials know he's willing to cave. Then they'll play Biden like a fiddle, and the U.S. will have fallen for China's climate change trap. The bottom line is the Chinese Communist Party will only do something about climate change if they believe it benefits them. Diplomatic pressure could work, but only if the Biden administration stays firm. Once they cave to the Chinese regime's demands, it's over. Plus, the Chinese Communist Party could just lie about their climate change commitments anyway. Lying is their superpower. Chinese leader Xi Jinping pledged to make China carbon neutral by 2060. But under the Paris Climate Agreement, China is considered a developing country, which means they can keep increasing their carbon emissions until 2030. And even after pledging to cut emissions, China went on a coal spree. It's building coal-fired power plants faster than the rest of the world combined. And officials have said China has no other choice but to rely on coal power for now. That's because the Chinese Communist Party does not care about carbon emissions. And it's not just coal. Back in 2019, China got busted for rogue emissions of an ozone-depleting chemical, CFC-11. That was directly in violation of the Montreal Protocol a legally binding international treaty that China signed. So the Chinese Communist Party is happy to ignore an environmental commitment if that commitment becomes inconvenient. Now that's an inconvenient truth. And there's another more philosophical difference between how the U.S. and China treat the environment. The idea behind man-made climate change is that we need to cut carbon emissions to lessen our impact on global warming. In other words, man should stop changing nature. But the Chinese Communist Party's philosophy is that man should change nature. In fact, like Chairman Mao said, man must conquer nature. Got lots of rivers? Build dams. Which is why China now has thousands of hydropower projects it doesn't want. Got too much desert? Plant a green great wall of trees. Which could be making things worse. Got lots of water in the south and not enough water in the north? Build the world's largest water diversion project, which does more harm than good. Worried about rain? Seed the clouds. That will guarantee no one rains on your parade. You get the picture. 
It would be more in character for the Chinese Communist Party to deal with global warming by building the world's largest air conditioner with Uyghur slave labor. So is there anything the U.S. can do to get China to address climate change? Actually, yes. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. The U.S. can get China to act on climate change if they play their cards right. First, like I said earlier, don't fall into the trap of caving into the Chinese regime's political demands in exchange for climate cooperation. Also, don't let the Chinese Communist Party game the system. That's what happened in the Paris Agreement, when China was allowed to continue growing its carbon emissions until 2030. China prefers its major economic and strategic competitors lead decarbonization at great expense both to render them less competitive and to pioneer best practices by trial and error. In other words, the Chinese regime wants the U.S. to cut carbon emissions, while China is allowed to increase emissions, because this gives China an economic advantage. Plus, the U.S. can invent carbon reduction technology that China can then steal for less. That's Chinese-style win-win mutual cooperation for you. The authors of this foreign policy article argue the only way for the U.S. to get China to actually cooperate is through climate competition, including carbon taxation. In other words, make it economically costly for the Chinese regime to keep increasing its carbon emissions. Literally make them pay for it. The EU is already planning on doing this, with a carbon border tax, and the Chinese regime hates it. That's why they're complaining it violates trade principles. But even if the U.S. doesn't do this, the most important thing is to not fall for China's climate change trap. The real danger is if people in the U.S. repeat the Communist Party's demands. After his meetings in China, John Kerry told reporters he would pass on what Chinese officials said to President Biden. According to Kerry, on the one hand, we're saying to them, you have to do more to help deal with the climate. And on the other hand, their solar panels are being sanctioned, which makes it harder for them to sell them. Okay, but those solar panels are being sanctioned because of human rights abuses, specifically for being made using Uyghur slave labor. Is Kerry saying that Chinese factories can have a little Uyghur slave labor as a treat, as long as those factories are for making solar panels? Now, Kerry was President Obama's Secretary of State, and Chinese officials lied to the Obama administration. A lot. So is Kerry being naive here, or just diplomatic? Hard to say. But there are other groups in the U.S. who would like to persuade the Biden administration to just ease up on the Chinese Communist Party for the environment. Back in July, over 40 progressive groups sent a letter to President Joe Biden and lawmakers urging them to prioritize cooperation with China on climate change and curb its confrontational approach over issues like Beijing's crackdown on Hong Kong and forced detention of Uyghur Muslims. The letter, which reads like it was ghostwritten by the Global Times, blames the U.S. demonization of China for being a major barrier to global climate talks. And the solution, of course, is multilateralism, diplomacy, and cooperation with China. Look, the Chinese Communist Party is an authoritarian regime that is torturing people, using them for slave labor, and committing genocide. They do not care about addressing the climate crisis. They do not care about multilateralism and cooperation unless they can use those for their own advantage. They only care about staying in power. Let's just hope the Biden administration knows this. And now, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding websites Patreon and Locals. Mats Matheson asks on Patreon, Hi Chris. I've been wondering something lately about how China are building so many new coal power plants. It seems odd seeing as how they are so worried about losing face, but then plan to pump even more pollution into the air, which makes China look even more of a dystopian nightmare. Wouldn't it make sense for them to just jump past the fossil fuels and go straight to renewables? 
It's not like they haven't stolen the necessary tech to do it. Are there coal barons pulling strings in the background or something else I'm missing? Well, Matts, there aren't exactly coal barons, but there are coal-rich provinces. Back in 2014, the Chinese regime gave the power to approve new coal power plants to provincial governments instead of the central government. Many local governments jumped at the opportunity to prop up GDP and create demand for locally mined coal with new power projects, leading to around 210 projects being rubber stamped in less than a year. But the central government isn't exactly reining in these projects. In fact, they've given a green light to the vast majority of them. And that's because in China, GDP and economic growth is king. Well, the Communist Party is king, but you get what I'm saying. And economic growth is also the reason China isn't abandoning fossil fuels for renewables. The Communist Party is looking to boost growth as fast as possible because of losses due to the coronavirus pandemic. And to do that, they need coal. Because renewable energy sources such as wind and solar power are intermittent and unstable, we must rely on a stable power source. We have no other choice. That's how one government official explained it. And sure, building more coal plants might make China look bad, but they're a developing country. The U.S. has been allowed to pollute the planet since the Industrial Revolution. Clearly, China should get a lot more time to do their own polluting. That's just fair. Thanks for your question, Matts. Be like Matts and support us on patreon.com slash chinauncensored or on chinauncensored.locals.com. And you'll have the chance for me to answer one of your questions on the show. I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.